All right, uh, we are uh, going to be wrapping things up here. This will be our last session, but before we go home today, we we have some people. <laughs> We have some people that are going to be ordained and licensed, and that's always a special way to end the event. But I wanted to just share with you, I mentioned a little bit earlier, I wasn't sure what year we started this, it's been quite a while. Um, but we are going through a, a transition of leadership here at Cornerstone. Um, new City in Cornerstone are, you know, uh, kind of becoming more than just sister churches. Pastor Daniel and Pastor Rod are going to begin co-pastoring both churches um, uh, at the end of this year, and uh, we are excited about this transition. As I shared, um, I'll be entering my 40th year of pastoral ministry, and I think it's time for some new wineskin. And uh, <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, we are doing that, and part of that transition, by the way, which I want to say is I'm personally really excited about, and I'm, I'm excited about uh, Cornerstone's future, New City's future, and how However that works and moves forward and Pastor Dave and Chris are transitioning at Agape, a family church in Clear Lake and uh, um, we are all kind of part of this organization, this network and uh, also we're going to be transitioning the leadership of that and I'm really, really excited about this. When Pastor Ann and I started CMAI almost 20 years ago, um, we just had a heart to uh, be a blessing to leaders and to people that were moving through the ranks of ministry and uh, being launched out. We had become pastor to pastors um, during the, the, those particular years. There were missionaries on the field that were looking to us as pastor. There were churches that had been launched out of Cornerstone and, and uh, Cedar Rapids Family Church was one of those. And uh, there are others that you know, have not always been able to get with us here at CMEI that look to us for pastoral leadership. And uh, we, we kind of started this organization not really knowing where it was going to go or what it was going to look like. We just wanted to be a blessing and uh, share our gifts with as many people as we could. But I think in that season of time, I personally always felt like there was just something missing and that we needed to go to another level. But trying to pastor the church and do all the things that we were doing. I just didn't have it in my heart to do what needed to take it to the next level. And so when we started talking about transitioning to leadership at the church, then that fostered a conversation about CMAI. And Pastor Daniel and Pastor Rod jumped all over that. And uh, um, I'm excited to share that uh, we are going to be trans trans transitioning, transitioning, translating, transitioning the leadership of uh, CMAI. And I, I am thrilled about that because I really believe that the things that I've had in my heart to do are actually going to come to pass now. And so we're going to, I want to give them an opportunity to uh, share about some things as we move forward and uh, about what it really, uh, the organization is going to become. But my thought is, is just, I love it. I'm excited about being a part of it. As, as we move forward and transition out of pastoral ministry, I, I believe that we've got things to say, don't we? <laughs> what? <laughs> don't look at you when we say it. So anyway, um, I'm going to let Pastor Rod and Daniel come up and talk to us a little bit about the future of CMAI, okay? All right. Well, thank you, Pastor Dan. Um, you know, we are so humbled uh, by what God has done, you know, through CMAI. It was actually uh, at CMAI that I met you guys, um, and you gave me an opportunity to speak and to really become a part of the network without actually paying dues and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, <laughs> In fact, he's not even a member yet. <laughs> So you have been so gracious to me, uh, <laughs> um, but we uh, we, I, we have benefited. I have benefited greatly uh, from CMAI and your leadership. Um, you know, I actually do remember at the time being in uh, Cedar Rapids with Oak Hill Jackson Community Church, and us being an independent church, we didn't really have a network. Uh, and so coming to CMAI gave us that. Um, and in some ways, I look to you as father in ministry as well. 
um, just in how uh, you led and um, how you poured into Daniel. Um, I got the benefit of that. So thank you for that. You want to say anything before we dive in? Yeah, I, I just, I can't express my gratitude enough as well in that when you launched me out to start a church in Cedar Rapids, CMEI had just begun and I was ordained within this organization to begin my next season of pastoring. And so to come full circle and to be able to be in this position as well is, is, is unheard of. And so, um, but vision continues to grow within ministry and in within father and son relationships, the next generation brings, should bring a new wine and wineskin to that. So um, we, we have some things that we want to share within this. We've shared with them what our, our uh, new name is uh, for CMAI. And if you want to begin with these slides, uh, uh, this is the name of the new network. Yeah. It's, it's going to be called Wells New Wells Ministry, Ministry Network. network. So, yeah. We're excited about that. We're, We're really glad you are excited too. About it. Yeah. <laughs> so on the next slide, you'll see, um, you know, it is uh, the Ministerial Association formerly known as CMAI. Um, and we believe that really the success of every ministry and ministry leader, it happens when those fresh wells of the Spirit, just like Alan was talking about, when those really are poured out in, over the ministries, over leadership, uh, it really begins to activate lives. Uh, and that really is a part of this vision, is those new wells uh, of God's Holy Spirit flowing. Yeah, uh, God gave us this verse uh, when we began praying about this. It's found in, in uh, uh, Genesis 26, verses 18 and 19. Um, it says, he, uh, referencing Isaac, says he reopened the wells that his father had dug, his father being Abraham, which the Philistines had filled in after Abraham's death. Isaac also restored the names Abraham had given them. So there's still legacy here. There's still the, the moving on of the legacy of what the father had begun in this ministry. Um, he goes on to say in verse nine, 19, Isaac's servants also dug in Gerar Valley, I didn't say that right, and discovered a well of fresh water. And so as we move forward in this, you know, a well in the natural is just a plentiful source or supply. That's the definition of it. And so what we're experiencing, what we hope to experience, are continued resources and fresh uh, wells of God's presence and spirit. Not only of his spirit, but within the leaders that lead um, with his spirit in them. And so this is what uh, we want to dive into, some of, the, some of the backbone of this. Yeah. So if you think about the objectives uh, of New Wells uh, Ministry Network, um, there are four. Um, this refresh, reopen, rebuild, and restore. Uh, and so we're going to talk about each one of these uh, in a little more detail. So refresh. Um, we're made new and, re and re we're, we're made new and renewed uh, when we are refreshed. Um, I mean, think about that, that we're made new and renewed when we are refreshed. Um, you know, all of us as ministry leaders and ministry workers, sometimes, you know, we might experience burnout. We might get um, weighed down with things. And we need uh, to be refreshed. Um, and a time in a gathering like this is just what we get is refreshed when we come together and, and, and hear great word from God and the spirit uh, being among us. And uh, so, but that's done through personal connections and relationships. Uh, and if you think about in uh, John 4, the woman at the well and uh, that whole scripture and that whole encounter, uh, and we've got scriptures here on the next uh, slide uh, that kind of point to this refreshing uh, but whoever drinks of the water that I give him shall never thirst, but the water that I give him will come in him a well of water springing up into eternal life. So think about, uh, you know, Jesus having this encounter with this woman saying, you need this water that I have. 
because life weighs you down and you know has you off course but if you get this water it's gonna refresh you and it's gonna spring up out of you and it's gonna pour refreshment on all of those around you as well. And there's a couple of other scriptures I'm not going to read here for sake of time, but you can see those as well. Yeah, the next uh, objective here is what we just call reopen. Um, and that, by definition, is this, is this. Communities are made new and renewed when spiritual wells are reopened and kept open. And let me just read this to you. Churches represent a spiritual well that God has placed in cities and towns throughout our state, the nation, and our world. It is vitally important that we work to open, keep open, and reopen wells in these communities. Churches are closing their doors in America at an unprecedented rate. And if you add that 42 million teenagers or young people they say will leave the church by 2050, we have to keep wells open. We have to do what we can to keep these wells open in our world um, and even as closely as a rural Iowa, right? Or where we're at right now, wells are closing all the time. And uh, one example of this is, is Dan Sanford, one of our own, went in and kept a well open in a little town right outside of, of Cedar Rapids. He has about 15 to 20 people in that well, but the well was kept open and he's preaching the gospel and the, and the great commission and the great commandment and the great calling is continuing to go forth. And so we're keeping these open, not based on size, but based on what God wants to do to minister to people's lives. And so a few verses within this, um, again, Genesis 26 15 says, so the Philistines had filled up the wells um, with dirt, and, but these were the wells that had been dug by the, by the servants of his father Abraham. And I read the other verse. He reopened these wells and they continued to flow in these people's lives and in these communities. Okay, so after reopening, we want to rebuild. Uh, rebuild and um, I, I, let me read a little bit of this, uh, and I think you'll make the connection even with what was talked about today. We're made new and renewed when we build bridges of trust that can handle the weight of truth. Think about that. Build bridges of trust that can handle the weight of truth. And, you know, the truth that Pastor Dan shared a little bit ago, it had a lot of weight in it, didn't it? <laughs> We need to build bridges so that people can handle that truth. Um, so this happens through uh, bridge building opportunities to take place between ethnicities, generations, denominations, ministry net networks, as well as personal relationships. Our world is divided and polarized in so many ways. Bridge building provides the opportunity to understand and to be understood. It serves, it serves as a great way to strengthen ministries that are weak in areas and to rebuild these areas to their original purpose. And so, you know, you've heard uh, Pastor Dan talk about bridge building and the, the course uh, and training that they offer. Um, that's got to be a part of this uh, in rebuilding. And you look at, uh, he talked about Isaiah 61. Uh, then they will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will raise up the former devastations and they will repair the ruined cities, the desolation of many generations. Acts 15, 16. Afterward, I will return and restore the fallen house of David. I will rebuild its ruins and restore it. And then the, the last objective that we really want to focus on is restoring. It says here, we are made new and renewed when we are restored. Um, you know, leading in ministry is a tremendous privilege, but can, it can also uh, be very demanding, as, as we all know, so very well. It can be so demanding. And there are times when ministry leaders are, find themselves in a place of disillusionment, uh, burnout, and, which leads to giving up. And so we want to be a, a network that helps restore and keep that ministry leader in that place of restoration. And some verses in here, David said after he had come out of a very difficult time in his own life, he said, God, please, he said, please create in me a clean heart again. Uh, renew a loyal spirit within me. And, and uh, you know, Jesus said in Luke 14, salt is good, 
But if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? And, and so we need this as leaders. We need to be salty as leaders for, this, for our world that we're living in today. And so what we want to do is, what does this look like with kind of the, the, uh, the meat on the bones then? The, the, this is kind of the, the, the objectives, but what is the structure? What, how can a participant benefit from being within this network? And so we want to share some of those things with you. We have five that we just see this is where we're beginning, if you would, but this is the five we want to share for today. Yeah, and it's very high level. Um, there's definitely more work uh, to dive into each of these, but at a very high level, we'll have these structures. Um, New Wells relational um, leadership. And so we think again about um, a gathering like this um, where we really try to get real with one another as uh, authentic uh, leaders and developing these authentic relationships that we can uh, really bring encouragement and inspiration and vision and accountability um, so that pastors and ministry leaders can feel cared for. I mean, Pastor Dan and Pastor Dan, that's, that's I think, was at the heart of CMAI is to care for uh, ministry leaders. Um, and we want to continue that um, through this relational leadership. Um, the next one is something that we, we've doing as well, been doing as well, and that is uh, for, for these almost 20 years is ministerial credentials as we are getting ready to do that in just a few minutes. Uh, giving opportunity for leaders to be licensed and or ordained to follow and pursue the call of God that has been placed on their lives. New Wales School of Ministry. Um, we believe that uh, it is really time for us to be investing in the lives of young people. Um, it, you know, you see, you know, it's time for front row here doing a transition and we're not far behind. We need to make sure that, uh, <laughs> I called you out, <laughs> to make sure that we are developing more and more capable uh, people to lead, the, lead in ministries. And so we want to have this online school of ministry that um, includes bi uh, biblical studies as well as leadership development um, courses uh, to help people grow their skills. Yeah, and this is a big, this is what Alan referred to as an opportunity for not just to grow, but to multiply. If yeah. we don't do something like this, we don't multiply. And so we want to make room. But really what New Wells is about is about making room for others to step up and lead. For younger people to step up and lead, but everybody having the opportunity to lead. Um, the next one, something that we, we, we've been doing every year for uh, 18 years of CMAI is New Wells Annual Leadership Gathering. An annual gathering to strengthen, refresh, and encourage ministry leaders through the relationships of those in the, in the network and other ministry networks. I don't know if you know this, but presently in the body of Christ as a whole, there's this, uh, there's this resurgence of networks taking place, of people tying together and say, let's pull together because it's way too difficult to pull alone here. And it's happening all, it's, it's a global move of God, of people linking arms up together to do this no longer separately. And, and that's a big part of what we're, these gatherings about are about and doing that with other networks as well. So... And so the last area is around this uh, network of churches. Um, so how do we get networked as churches? Um, and we've kind of defined it in two ways. Um, first is a new city um, church. Um, so if you think, uh, we've got, uh, we developed New City um, in Cedar Rapids and uh, we're going to uh, continue to develop that network of churches that will um, really carry the same mission, vision, values, um, and leadership structure as that of New City Church. Um, so that's one way of being connected uh, in this network. The other way is that um, a church that participates in the network is, is a church that wants to operate as its own church, as its own entity, through its own values, through its own leadership structure. Um, 
but we but it still wants to network and and link arms with other ministries and so uh, there's there's those two approaches there's some other things as he said this is this is very high level in the way that God is doing this and and um, so what we want to do is to be able to embrace the call and the unique vision that God has for each leader. We don't, we, we're not writing the vision for any one leader. God, that's God's part to do that. What we want to do is m help make room for those leaders to lead. Wherever they may be, in small rural Iowa, in here in Des Moines, Cedar Rapids, wh wherever that, and, and wherever that is. And so, we're just, we're just elated about the opportunity to to grow within the context of this of this network and we wanted to open up to see if any of you you have a document that you can take home with you that has some of that information we're in the beginning stages of going to put together uh, first of all structure the rest of the leadership team for this some of them are in this room but just so that we don't leave anybody out we will not have them stand up today but because there's others that we're asking as well and and so we're going to create a team that as well sends other ministries out. For example, uh, Pastor Dave and Pastor Chris have a ministry of the Father's Heart message. We want that message to go out yes. from this network. Right. We want that to, as a, an extension of this network. Pastors Dan and, and Ann have the message of bridge building. We want that message to continue to go out from this network. What uh, uh, Lucretia and Nathan are doing at, at Brownicity that you're part of as well. We want the, the messages like that to go out from this network. And, and there are others that uh, we believe God is, is, is aligning with to go out from this network. And so it's, it's very multi-leveled. Um, uh, extensions in in a lot of ways so well we're gonna stop any questions before we transition to our next part in our agenda we're excited about this and we hope that you will want to continue to be a part of the network um, Amen. All right, I'm, I'm sure as we uh, progress through this and things get developed, there's going to be a lot of communication that's going out and you'll have opportunities to ask questions. And, but I'm in. I'm all in. I love this. I'm in. Pastor Dave's in. All right. <laughs> all right, before we go, I know it's been kind of a long day. You okay? You, you just had a little break. We, we're going to do something really, really special, and I don't want to rush through this. I don't want to uh, act like because this is the last thing that we're going to do today um, and take that, we, you know, then we're going to get out of here and take away from the significance of what's happening. But be, today, before we go home, we're going to, we are going to take a few minutes and do something very special. And that is recognize the unique call that God has put on some special people that are in our midst today. You know, God calls everyone according to purpose. We all have a purpose. Second Timothy uh, chapter 1 verse 9. But inside of that, we're all called. We all have purpose. We all have a place in the body of Christ. But inside of that, he is called, uh, inside of everything that he has called everyone to do, there are some who according to purpose are called to lead, to teach, to assist at a greater level in equipping the saints. There are those that are going to be set apart to help people how to learn how to live their lives for Christ. Not just by what they teach, but by the way they conduct themselves. We call them ministers. Ministers of the gospel. This is not an easy journey. Um, getting to this place. It's not an easy journey at any level. There's always opposition as we are moving through the the ranks of the body of Christ and, you know, starting on the outside and becoming a part and then moving into a leadership role and leading a ministry. Um, it's, it's not always easy and it's almost always opposed every time you make steps to make a greater commitment. A minister's job is to teach the word in a manner that it brings about growth in the lives of people. Anybody can teach, but it, it, it's... It's a minister's job to teach in a way that people 
can uh, engage and embrace and grow from the teaching of that ministry. We've been watching God bring these individuals that we're going to be um, recognizing today to a place in ministry where they have become someone who has begun to help in perfecting other peoples. In Acts chapter 13 in verse 2 it says, One day these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting and the Holy Spirit said, Dedicate Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. So Barnabas and Saul were sent out by the Holy Spirit. Since before the foundations of the world, God has waited for this time and moment in these people's lives. You know, I want you to think about that. Before the foundations of the world, he called out their name. He knew who they were. He knew that they would come to this place where they would be set apart to do the work of the ministry. And I'm excited about that, to think that what is happening today in these individual lives is something that we just didn't cook up, we just didn't plan, but this was planned out by God since before the foundations of the world for them to come to this place to do the specific, of, specific area of ministry that they were created for. Yes, God. That, that is so cool. Yes. All of these candidates have been functioning in ministry at a new level. And as their pastors that are here today, we have recognized the gift and the calling that God has put upon their lives. So today it's our desire to do nothing more than publicly recognize them and set them apart for the work that God has called them to. Um, we, we get to recognize, we get to affirm, but it's the God is the one who, who has actually called them. So I'm blessed today to call before you and I'll ask you to uh, come and maybe stand off here to my left if you would. Um, Daniel Sanford. And uh, the next name I'm going to call, Daniel is going to be ordained today. Um, Sally Galimit, who is actually, I don't know, it's so late in the Philippines right now. And I don't know if uh, Saldi is actually watching today, but we are actually ordaining him uh, in the Philippines today, right here from Des Moines, Iowa. And we are so glad that he's becoming a part of this organization. Okay, and then we have Allison Stratton, if she would come. Roderick Scott Dooley II. Eric Pluff. Jennifer Coleman. And Hillary Sheeks. If you would come and join us. So as I shared today, we are conferring upon two of them ordination and the rest of them licensing. So as they stand here before us, I would like to uh, read some scripture in Galatians chapter 1. Um, Paul said, but even before I was born, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. Then it pleased him to reveal his son to me so that I would proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. And I want you to know that the call of God that is on your life is the call of God. It's not the call of us. It's not the call of man, your parents, your friends, or anybody else. It is the call of God. The Apostle Paul said in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 um, verse 7. Um, let me turn my page right. By God's grace and mighty power, I have been given the privilege of serving him by the spreading of of good news. By God's grace and mighty power, you have been given the privilege of spreading the good news. And it's God's grace upon your life. Not some special gift or talent or, you know, ability that you have discovered or found. It's only but by God's grace will you be able to fulfill and complete everything that he's asked you to do. So as I stand before us and they're facing you, these ministers of God stand before you today not because of any great accomplishments, not because of what they have done, but rather because of who they are. I want you to think about that. There is a gift of ministry in each and every one of their hearts. A gift given to them by God to serve you. Today I'll say you. To serve us. To serve God only knows who in the future. So I charge all of us that are here today to witness this. Um, that as they discharge their gifts, as they fulfill their ministries, in agreement with the Holy Scriptures, that we would receive them for who they are. 
that we would respect the ministry calling and the gift that God has put upon their lives as ministers of the gospel. In a moment, I'm going to charge you with three things as it relates to the scriptures. Um, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, it says, Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to his people? Who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 20, it says, And whoever wants to be first among you must become your servant. This is all about serving. This is not all about loving ministry more than people. The gift and the calling that God has put upon your life more than the opportunity that we have to serve. In Philippians chapter 2, Paul said, Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a servant. So we charge you with these things. We charge you before God and his company to acknowledge and accept that God has chosen you. You did not choose him. He chose you. I charge you to acknowledge and to accept that the call to ministerial leadership is a call to be servant of all. I charge you to acknowledge and accept that your role as a minister of the gospel is one of stewardship of someone else's domain. You are called to be faithful, ever aware that you will be held responsible and accountable for the calling, the ministry gifts that God has put upon your life. The Lord has called you to Christian ministry to serve Him in love, humility, and sincerity. You have completed a a, a period of proving yourself, of ministerial training. You've completed everything that God has asked you to do <laughs> up until this point. You have received this confirmation today from your church and from your pastors and from the Holy Spirit. And as you serve in the body of Christ as a preacher, teacher, Servant of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Always remember the confidence that your family, that your friends, that your Savior has put in your hearts and lives today. So I ask you, the candidates today, do you freely pledge your love, your loyalty, your faithful service, and sincere stewardship of your gifts and talent to God by serving his people and the office of minister for which you are here to be ordained and licensed for today. Okay. I, th I think they all said I do. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I, I would like um, uh, us to, uh, specifically the pastors of, of these uh, candidates to come and stand with them. And we want to lay hands on you and and pray for you and uh, take this opportunity to um, <laughs> let's let's get near um, our, our family and candidates and lay hands on them okay Scotty we can't get to you but your mom and dad there are there so we're gonna <laughs> okay. praise the Lord so let's just lay hands on all everybody touch somebody and would you all stretch your faith this way father today Lord, as we stand before these candidates, God, we stand in awe of all that you are doing in their hearts and lives. They are a gift to the body of Christ, to us. And as their pastoral leadership, we lay our hands on them, recognizing the gifts and the callings that you have placed upon their lives. We thank you that they are anointed by the Holy Spirit of God to fulfill this ministry and to accomplish all that you've created them to do. We recognize the gift, we respect it, we honor it, and we say yes to it. And Lord, as we lay hands on them, we release them in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the authority of your word, to the ministry and to the calling that you have placed upon their lives. And may you grace them, Father, with strength, with wisdom, with tenacity, yes. with boldness, yes. to be everything 
that you've created them to be in opposition, in the face of the opposition that will come to their hearts and lives. And so Lord, we thank you today in Jesus' name. And all of us that are here witnessing um, this and all of us who are laying hands on them, we, we are just grateful in our hearts. And we release them into that ministry calling that you put on their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, um, we, we have a uh, certificate for the licensed uh, people today. The ordination certificates are coming. And uh, uh, we'll get those to you as soon as possible. So, you know what we want to do? Are we done? One, one more thing, but okay, when we, when we are done, then we wanted to give you an opportunity to come up and greet them. So can they stand here for a minute? We're going to let them stand here and then before um, you leave today, let's make sure that you come up and hug their neck and congratulate them. And <laughs> I'm proud of you. Love you. There we go. I'm going to ask uh, Pastors Dan and Ann to come up here, if you would. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Dave and uh, Chris as well, and Pastor Turan to come on up here, if you would. What, what we realize is that this is a spiritual shift of an apostolic mantle on your lives as well. And we need that to happen spiritually. From you guys to us. Yes. We need that to happen. And so we've asked uh, Pastor Dave and Pastor Turan and Chris as well to speak into that and to pray over this transition of apostolic leadership so that we carry that and continue to move forward in the power of that. So, gentlemen, uh, whoever wants to uh, pray first and however you want to do this. I know we didn't give you a lot of instruction here. We just said, will you do this? But... Uh, Pray together here. Father, thank you, Father, for uh, your grace and your mercy uh, as we've fumbled along these many years. Uh, Father, help us to, uh, to appreciate the blessings that you have uh, given to us. And in one another. And uh, the good things that you have done in us and through us, Father, we are extremely grateful to you, for it is in you that anything good can take place. And so, Father, we just uh, speak, Father God, uh, for these old wineskins. Yes, God. <laughs> renewal <laughs> and restoration so we can hold a little bit more new wine Lord and we pray for this new uh, transition Father God these <clears throat> these uh, new wine skins these these new people Father we we declare and we do this over those who have just been licensed and ordained be free and be wild in Jesus Christ and grow to be all that God has called you to be in Jesus name. Amen. Well, I will continue to pray but I mean no it's always a challenge to come after Pastor Toyn. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but uh, just want to consider uh, these things that what a wonderful vision of shift but even as we look at this logo shift and what has been announced as the definition that it's a slight change in position or direction one of the things I also noticed about the word shift or even the logo is that shift meaning slight change so that people can follow 
if it was to be all of a sudden, everyone couldn't go with it. But when it's a shift, people can actually catch and follow along. And what an appropriate statement. Um, also, when we talk about pioneering, Pastor Dan, I'm glad somebody else spoke up and said that I don't know if we could agree that you just started um, to see what God had put in you. Um, I think you have caused all of this room and those are overseas and international to follow after um, what you and Pastor Ann have been and what you've done to the kingdom of God. If you think about it, none of us would be here if it had not been for your pioneering spirit. So therefore, it's no shame that you're still pioneering. Amen. I want to bring attention to just this one verse, and that is, we've been talking about James chapter 1. I want to talk about, it says verse 17. I want to talk about verse 18. Many of us out here today, I just want to exhort us that if you kind of look, it's less young people per se than it is some of us that are more seasoned. And I really think that that should be an indictment that we really need to change that. If there's a huge shift, we need more Scott. Um, 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 Dooleys. We need the rest of the young people. We really need the Hillary's. We, we need the young people. Amen. Um, Pastor Dan, Daniel said that he thought I was his age. No, he thought I was much younger than him. And I just want to remind you, I'm only two years younger than him. Amen. <laughs> but the thing is that many of us have the Amplified Bible Classic. Many of us have those Bibles, right? The Amplified Classic. But did you know there's a new revision? There's been a shift to just the Amp. This is just the amp. It says, verse 18, it was on his own will that he gave us birth as his children by the word of truth so that we would be a kind of first fruits of his creatures, a prime example of what he created us to be set apart to himself, sanctified, made holy for his holy divine purposes. God desires that we would continue in his divine purposes. Let's pray. Would you stretch forth your faith and hands? I exhort all of us that though these, for all of us that have been a part of CMAI and in ministry with this journey, it has been long and powerful. Lives have been saved. We've seen much. We've been much. Some left. Some stayed. Some revived. Some died. And some thrive. This is not an end, a final chapter. This is a medley, a relay, a relay race of a steeplechase with hurdles and obstacles along the way. This is a long jump. This is a high jump. This is a never-ending wrestle meet out of your weight class. So we are in dependency on Jesus alone. We prophetically speak you that you never dwell long on those losses on the mat in high school nor in college. But then you and your dad would never let you do so. You looked for to make the change, which even Pastor Angie said, you're a change and a change maker. I pray and shower over you this prophetic shift from one season to the next. The word of God says Moses' eyes were never dim nor his strength abated. So Pastor Dan, we know that in the book of Jude, the devil wrestled for the body of Moses, but we know the word of God says God buried Moses so that he would show up on Mount Transfiguration. I pray that you right now would show up on a higher mount that you might say that we might see those around you that it was good for us to be here to see this come to pass. So I say to you in the angst that you've been feeling that the devil is wanting to sift you like grain or wheat in discouragement but you have come now to be strengthened so you can strengthen your brothers of every color and every nation and every situation of every possession and every oppression. You have come for such a time as this and as you put on new shoes we pray that your feet will be straight and walk straight to the degree that no degree will ever change your course from Christ and just as our main pastor and speakers did today I say this Irish prayer may the roads rise to meet you may the wind be at your back may the sun shine warm upon your face the rain fall soft upon your fields and until we meet again may God hold you in the palm of his hand father we release a prophetic 
powerful anointing that this is a shift in leadership God just as Moses went to Joshua as Elijah went to Elisha and as Jesus went to the disciples now is the time that all these things would shift for us all it goes from CMAI to now us having new wells God we are asking that you would ordain Rod and Daniel to take this baton and run their leg well in Jesus Christ's name release it amen amen, amen. praise the Lord okay all right Ooh, thank you wow holy spirit okay um guys from the bottom of our hearts we thank you for coming and being a part of this we want to thank all of you that have joined us virtually and uh participated with us throughout the day it's been an honor for us to uh serve you and i hope that you received what you needed out of this today so whew, we're gonna go <laughs>